let's talk about void self pronouns. Void self pronouns are neo pronouns inspired by the word void. And they can be used by anyone, regardless of gender identity or expression. They also may fall under the dehuman pronouns. And void, void pronouns were created in 2014. And they're used in the same way that they then pronouns are used. So you might say, I met void today. Or void went to the shop, if you are the individual who uses void void pronouns. That doesn't even make any sense! Now, it would appear that these people are just adding the letter S and the word self, any other word they can think of, and calling it a neo pronoun. For example, the young lady we just heard from used the word void and said, voids void self. The young lady we heard from in yesterday's video, who used vampire pronouns, used the word vamp and said, vamps vamp self. And they expect us to remember their preferred pronouns? Anyway, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So I have a very quick and very crazy Clown World update for you guys today. And as usual, we have, well, very little time to waste. So let's get into it. Now, if you place your attention on the screen for a moment. Now, I'm not quite for sure exactly who this fella is. But he looks like he could have played middle linebacker for the New York Jets back in his younger days. And ladies, imagine walking into the restroom and seeing this fella getting ready to do his business? That's just creepy. Maybe that would fall under the category of creepy. All right, let's keep it moving with former Republican Congressman Joe Walsh. Now, Joe Walsh recently came out and said he was voting for Carmelo Harris for president. Those of you that don't know who Joe Walsh is, he's just your typical neocon rhino warmonger. And the only thing I would have to say to Joe is, if you're voting on the same side as former Vice President Dick Cheney, his daughter Liz Cheney, Mitt Romney, and your buddy is Adam Kinzinger, you're on the wrong side of this. Probably. Republicans for Harris. I'm a Republican and I'm voting for Kamala Harris. I'm a principled conservative and I'm voting for Kamala Harris. It's a big step. It's a courageous step. And I'm going to tell you something. I was on a call last night, Republicans for Harris, a big old Zoom call, 70, 80, 90,000 people on the call. Uh, and, and the first point I made was how damn courageous it is for all of us to identify as a Republican, identify as a conservative. And we don't just say we oppose Donald Trump. We say publicly in the public square, we're supporting the only person who can beat Donald Trump. That's the Democratic nominee. That's Kamala Harris. That's a big deal because when you do that, that's a courageous deal. When you do that, when you say that, you are ending your career as an elected Republican. Understand that. When I came out against Trump five, six years ago, I knew I was ending my career as a Republican. Adam Kinzinger, my buddy and colleague, comes out against Trump a couple years ago. He knows he's ending his career as a Republican. Agree or disagree, applaud the courage. What the hell did you just say? I'm a principled conservative and I'm voting for Kamala Harris. Personally, I think you're a fucking idiot. All right, next up we have this clip that has been circulating on the interwebs of Carmelo Harris's husband, Doug Emhoff, on some podcast talking about a bro hug he shared with her VP pick, Tim Waltz. Now, it's interesting because lately people have been kind of questioning Tim Waltz's sexuality because he has some very interesting mannerisms, we'll say. Roll it. We get up there and we just do this big bro bear hug 
And I cannot tell you how many texts I got from my actual friends and actual family members like, you never hugged me like that. What's going <laughs> did you, on? You literally just met this guy. <laughs> did you hit him on the back? Did yeah. you hit him on the back to to, to preserve your, your heteronormativity? Did you give him the back pat? No, <laughs> did you see the embrace? video? We just did this full on. <laughs> and I think, you know, he was like this. I was like this. And then it was just this bro hug. And um, I heard from a lot of actual friends. Excuse me. Uh, the uh, the f did you just say? Hit him on the back to to, to preserve your your heteronormativity. Did you give him the yeah. back pat? <laughs> you see the embrace. video. We just did this full on, <laughs> and I think you know he was like this. I was like this, and then it was just this. It just seems kind of gay, doesn't it? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Now I never knew there was such thing as a non-binary haircut. To be honest with you guys, I never knew there was such thing as a non-binary person. Yet here we are. Anyway, here we have a non-binary hairstylist giving a non-binary person a non-binary haircut. Roll it. Sometimes what makes a haircut feel non-binary comes from the styling. Today, our goal is to add fullness and thickness on top. We'd also like to change the head shape and make it feel a little bit more feminine. Now that I've cut it, hair product is really how we're going to get that more feminine shape. Fullness through the crown and occipital bone gives the head shape kind of that question mark super femme feel. So that's what I'm creating. Volume and fullness come from the root. So if we're not building from the root up, our hair is going to be too heavy and it's going to collapse with all of that product. Drying it to get it locked into that shape. The profile really changed. It's cool and confident. What are you talking about? You're delusional and your demonstration is meaningless. Now, here we have a non-binary adult woman doing some kind of weird little skit where she pretends to be several different young people looking out a new name because she came out as non-binary. This is all make-believe. Roll it. Did you pick out your non-binary name yet? I have some ideas. Oh, let me hear it. I was thinking maybe Sage or Leaf. Nature vibes. Peaceful, grounding, or Jude, or Leo. Your favorite Beatles song or your rising sign? Slay. Or Harris, because, you know. The future Madam President? You'd be in good company. Brittany Jessica Jameson, is Brittany here? I don't go by that anymore. What do you prefer? Uh, do it. Harris. It's Harris. Hmm. All right, Harris. <laughs> And let's do one more non-binary because I find it pretty fascinating that these people make up these whole new identities for themselves and they tell us as society we're supposed to play along. Roll it. Um, ZZ are actually my pronouns. They are a non-binary expression um, for people who don't resonate with they, them because not everyone does. There are other ones as well, such as Fay Femme. And uh, many people have reasons for why they would prefer to go by an alternative. I have my own, and I will be doing my own explanation video on my TikTok later in the week. But for now, um, yeah, they're just my pronouns, and they are what I go by as a non-binary person. Thank you. I don't know what any of that means, but it sounds f***ing retarded. <laughs> Hey guys, real quick, real quick, before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsors of today's video. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to let this loop on the screen. Now, I have questions as to why this fella is hanging out at Disney without any kids. Anyway, today's video is being brought to us by, we have three sponsors today. Our first sponsor is great friend and longtime subscriber, John D'Arcangelo. Second sponsor of today's video, all the way from Vietnam, is Sean Pierce. And last, but certainly not least, third sponsor of today's video is Allison Shoby. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate the support. And once again, today's honorable mention goes to Pastor Bob Rogers for leaving a super thanks on the last video. So, Pastor Bob, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. So once again, today's video sponsors are John D'Arcangelo, Sean Pierce, and Allison Shoby with the honorable mention going to Pastor Bob Rogers. Now, if you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description box below, and I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you. All right, get this guy off the screen, please. Oof.
scary gay, scary gay, scary gay. Stop! Now, I don't know exactly what is going on in this next clip. I hope it's just some kind of weird skit that these two lovebirds are doing, but honestly, I don't know anymore. I think we found the end of the internet. Roll it. What do you want, Nark? Take a shower. Can't. I'm pheromone maxing. <laughs> this isn't you, Bubba. I don't get to talk to my alpha that way. What? It's okay. This isn't you, dude. <laughs> I'll step down from a lady, but this won't be the last you see of me. <laughs> Thank you, Bubba. Do that thing out. Oh. Oh. That's f***ing disgusting. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. All right, next up we have this young lady who says that getting rid of white privilege is a spiritual experience, but it's hard to do it without oppressing others. Okay, roll it. White, and I have white privilege, and I want to get rid of my white privilege, but I don't know how to do that. I don't have any social influence, and I don't have any power, and that's the first problem. If we want to be cultural workers, people who move culture and influence people so things can change, we have to gain power. But white people can't gain power without oppressing others, so we're in a tough spot. The first step is to decolonize, and that means understanding that we are not white, we are European Americans. And coming to terms with that can take a long time, and that's why I teach soul autonomy because it's a whole spiritual awakening to go through. In reality, if we are weak and fractured and isolated and lonely, we're not going to be able to give up our white privilege and help anybody. There's probably some part of you that's telling you there's some spiritual aspect to growth and some spiritual part of you that needs to be healed and to come out and be empowered. And that's what's written in the stars as well. Trust yourself that you can become strong enough to make a difference in this world. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? Now, as some of you may know, every now and again, I like to end these videos on something either funny or inspirational. Because after being inundated with nothing but brain aids for 10 or 15 minutes, it's always good to lighten the load and try to have a good laugh. So we're going to be wrapping it up with this clip of Clay Travis being interviewed on live TV. And says something to the female reporter that is absolutely hilarious and catches her way off guard. Anyway, things are clearly getting very crazy out there, guys. So please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time. Love you guys. Peace. Roll it. I'm a First Amendment absolutist. I believe in only two things completely. The First Amendment and boobs. Once they made the decision... That they were Wait, not did going you just to say you believe in the First Amendment and related commentary? They hold couldn't. On, do hold anything. on, hold on. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. As a woman anchoring the show, did you say the First Amendment ends BWBS? Boobs. Two things that have only never let me down in this entire country's history: the First Amendment and boobs. Would you because even because say that matters. live on national television and with a female host? Because I like boobs and the First Amendment, which is exactly what I said. <laughs> Gotti! Gotti! And you ain't black.